Welcome back everyone. It's going to be version 9 for the Photoflux pack. Today I've added in a really cool new workflow and I've also done a tidy up. So we've cleaned up every single functional workflow in the pack. As you can see, I'm not going to show them all because they're all, uh, except for these two, these two are new, which we will look at today. Uh, all of these are in line, so no easy use. Every single one of these is just using the lines, no easy use. And finally, the Flux Laura from these are the previous two releases. So that's every functional workflow in the pack, all up to date, using, I think, all of the latest techniques. I did my best to make sure that they all work and everything. If you have any problems, let me know. We did a little bit of a live event on Sunday where I showed using the thumbnail creator to generate a whole bunch of thumbnails. So you'll start seeing new thumbnails coming up on the channel. I've been using my workflow to create those. But anyway, I don't want to waste your time because the weather is lovely. It's like blue skies in the UK right now. Absolutely stunning. Um, but something else that's stunning. Before I forget, hit that bell. Now, where were we? So here we go. What I've done for you guys is I've made it super easy to understand. Super clean, super easy. So it's all lines, right? Over on the right hand side, you'll notice a whole bunch of upscalers. This is slow mode. It's going to use flux upscale for every layer. So once you're happy with it, it just makes it better. So you've got the scene gen, which is the background. You've got your background subject, which would be character two. You know, he's slightly, he's behind. Main subject, he's in front or foreground subject. And then we've got some text layers. Now, obviously, it's all optional what you actually use. And as before, you have the options of using image to image or text to image. So text to image is mode one, image to image is mode two. And you just slap your image in there. Like I said, that's one of my screen dumps from a previous video. And also, if you just want to put an image in, you can just have an image loader and throw that one into where this decoder goes. All you got to do is mimic what that is hooked up to, the decoder, and then you can use an image loader for each layer. But I think you've got, you know, you can have more fun putting it into the load image or just using text to image, right? So that's enough of that. We generate our first scene, and once we're happy with it, what we can, well, if we're not happy with it, obviously you can change the prompt, and then you can change the model sampling, you can also change the seed. So those are your three things with text to image. Obviously with image to image, you can change the denoise as well. I mean, you can change the denoise for, for text to image, but it has a greater effect when you're doing image to image, right? Okay. And then obviously at the default, you've got the switch. It's currently on false. So I'll put it on true for fast mode. So it's going to skip the upscaling step on each layer. Once you're happy with your scene, what we're going to do is just move down to the next down to the next level. So background subject. And as you can see now, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to just work on this. And because of the way when you're when you're when you're happy, you fix the seed. Right. So that means that when you get to this stage, we're going to try different seeds, work on the prompt. So you'll be actively working in the last group you've enabled. And then once we're happy with it, lock it in. Right. Do you know what? While I'm explaining this, I'll just run it. Can I, can I run it? Will it not let me run it? What about if I change the seed, huh? There you go. So it already made it, so it was refusing. All right, so while that chugs away, I'll just explain more. So once you're happy with that, obviously we're going to want to remove the subject and do the overlay. So that enables that, right? If you just keep going. So we'll go down to the next foreground, the foreground subject. Uh, matter of fact, you know, because I'm just explaining it, I just wanted you to understand the concept that if you want to work in a particular area, just disable everything after it. And then when you change the seed and stuff, it, it won't be remaking all the stuff beforehand because it's fixed and it won't be making all the other stuff after it because you haven't even got there yet. Once you've got something in there that you like, you can just leave it all on. It just helps you when you're getting started. So let's see. See, I would actually do something to that. But then again, it, it'll get better when we upscale it. So I'm not too bothered. It's on fast mode anyway. So just to explain what's going on here, pretty easy. We've got the background being made. We've got the subject, the character that's behind the main character. And it's going to get Rem BG. And then we're going to slap that layer over the top. We've got adjustment offsets. So you can change the X, the Y, and the scale. 
rotation is in there as well if you want to mess around with that. Um, you have to make sure that it matches. So you'll notice that I'm upscaling everything by 2.5 and I'm using aspect controller at 16 to 9 on SDXL. So you, we, basically what that means is you go 2.5, it's going to be a little bit bigger than 1080p, a little bit bigger than that. And what we do is we match that 2.5 everywhere. So anywhere there's upscaling, this is the cheap upscaler, 2.5. But if we actually do look at the uh, up the this one, it's going to also be doing a 2.5 upscale somewhere. There it is. Doing a 2.5 upscale with a upscaling prompt. Okay. Now, obviously, you've still got your denoise and your shift values. I've tried to put the stuff in yellow so you can quickly see where you can, like, change things. This has its own um, aspect size. What I've done is I've made it default to match the source dimensions of what's being put into it. So you don't really need this unless you're, you really know what you're doing. Because you can't, you've got to be careful when you're mixing dimensions. Um, but this ensures that it stays the same. So then it's pretty much just doing like a pass through. We've got a switch here basically. So it's going to either do the dumb one or it's going to do the fancy one. And that's all dependent on the switch at the top. If you are a checkpoint user, you want to drag your model clip and VAE off whatever checkpoint you're using for flux into here. All right. That's all into these nodes and then it'll all work. So there's no problem with using the other one. Uh, with the text, I do a drop shadow effect. Is it still? Ah, it stopped. Right, right, right. Okay. Go again, please. So I've got a drop shadow effect um, on the text. So let's just have a quick look at that there. So what's going on is it's getting the text. It's turning it into a layer. It's doing 100% so we can color the layer. We're coloring the drop shadow black. And it's basically like an expanded mask. So you've got four expansion on the actual uh, text, which is going on last. And that has the color, which we want. Right. And um, basically, I use usually a set of complementary colors. I usually pick the pick some good ones from a triadic. But like what I've got here is a couple of codes that you can use, which are nice. And then I've made this is like a T flip. So if you choose one, it's going to be one way round. And if you choose two, it's going to be the other way round. Because what I was finding was I was constantly wanting to make the colors i'd have a pair of colors and i'd want to flip them okay and so that's that's how i did it um effectively connecting the outputs to wherever you want them to flip so it'll make it color a color b and then when you put it in this mode it's color b color a so it's just going to literally reverse it because i get lazy and i can't be bothered to go around and copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff a load of times so yeah, we're going to be using a background of, of that. And then person A looks like this. Uh, we're currently in anime mode, by the way. So the prompts will have anime in the styler. So obviously, if you don't want to use anime, just don't have the prompt styler saying anime. Um, and there is another character. That's the foreground character. Um, sometimes it's nice to be able to flip. So like, say the character's on already on the left side of the screen quite a bit, or he's on the right side, you know, I just found it convenient to be able to flip. So you're going to see there's a flip. Obviously, you can bypass that if you don't want it to flip. All right. But I've just left it there for you to decide what you want to do. Like this one, I've got it there, but it's already disabled. It's kind of why it's not in a group so that it won't reset by you toggling the groups. Um, is there anything else I need to tell you? Ah, yeah, the text. The text can be a bit of a nightmare, which is why it's last. Obviously, the text is on top, so it makes sense to do the top layers last. Um, but basically, the issue is bounding boxes, and I think I can find a better way of doing this. I'm sure I'm probably doing this in the most brutalistic way possible. Um, but I'm sure there are better ways of choosing where to put a mask how big the bounding box is. I know there are. I just haven't messed around with them very much. And there's always updates. So this is likely going to get improved because at the moment I find it a little bit cumbersome. You've got the precision, but it's just quite cumbersome because like I said, if you have an image which is say 
500 by 500. See, the beauty of this is everything is the same size. It, it uses the aspect controller to make everything the same size. But in the case of image to image or using your own image, things get a bit complicated. What we can do is we can use like a, a check, which is going to make sure that everything is the same size. And then we've got fill crop or keep proportion, padding. We've got all these different options here, right? Um, so we can get around it, but what I'm trying to say is um, sometimes you get better portraits from a tall aspect ratio, right? But if you put a tall aspect ratio mask into a wide aspect ratio, what happens is you end up with a bounding box, okay? And basically the bounding box will be the limit. So it doesn't matter how much you push these, it'll hit the limit and you'll get half the character chopped off because it's basically you're pushing, you've got an image size, say 1024 by 1024 and the characters in the middle of it, say, and you want to push him over outside of his frame. Do you see what I mean? So what, what I've done to get around this is the upscaling. So what we do is we do the upscale 2.5. So then it matches. Now, obviously I'm using the same aspect ratio throughout, right? But by upscaling this to be the same size, what we can do is we've now set a bounding box, which is the size of the viewing window, right? So essentially what I can do from there is I can actually use the scale to bring it down, right, inside of it. Uh, at the moment, I'm just matching. Um, and the reason is usually because his head's actually cut off. You know what I mean? It's not that I, it's not that I, I cut his head off, it is cut off, and I've just matched it to the height of the frame, you see. Um, and one problem I had when I'm, because I've done this with text to image, this is all done with text to image, right? And like I said, you want to generate two separate characters and two separate styles in a scene, you can do that. You want to move them around and stuff, you can do that 100%, no problemo. It's not going to be difficult. It's just a case of setting it up. And once you've finished, you can just drop the image in here and it's like a Photoshop. You know, all you've got your layers and they can all be positioned You can change the stuff. So I've told you about the bounding boxes. I've told you about how the text can be a bit of a bugger. Uh, what I've done to help myself is I've done a few tricks. So as you can see, this doesn't really work very nice. It's nice, but it doesn't really map very well. Same with that. This is really cool, but it doesn't really map very well. So what I've done is I've got it so it's. I've inverted it, first of all. So by inverting it, you've got more solid to work with, right? Um, and then what we've done is we've done 100 on the opacity and we've colored it. That's why I was showing you the colors earlier. So if you see the colors here, it's blue, right? So if I was to just go up to my uh, thing and then hit the button and cue another one, it's going to give me the alternate color. Yes. So yeah, what we've got here is we've got sort of like a drop shadow effect going on and all this, but this looks a bit sketchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the fast mode. Do, 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 do. There we go like that. And then just run it again. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the uh, flux upscalers to do the background, each of the characters. I haven't put it on the text because usually the text is pretty good. But actually, when I was looking at that text, it did look a bit sketch. So, you know, but yeah, what I was trying to say was you can scale down. You can have a bounding box that's the size and then scale it down inside of it. And then you can move it anywhere you want. That was my solution for not being able to use the full screen size. So, like I said, if you have a portrait of someone who is like uh, tall, you have to make the image like four times bigger. Because the, 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 so this is why I want boundary box controls and I'm sure I'll find them because I know somebody's made better nodes, which can make this even better. Probably there's probably a better way of uh, choosing where you want things and all this business. So that's just about everything I've got for you. I think, uh, this, like I said, you'll find this one up on the, uh, main site. Okay, that is everything I had for you. And so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. So, memberships are here. I've added donator and member. 
The donator membership is just uh, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. And uh, check out the join now button for more information.